I'm Doug. And I'm Kathy. And, and this, this is Maggie, Maggie May. May. Join us as we follow the moon. And welcome to amazing Idaho. This state has totally blown us away. It has so many contrasts and different things. Hidden gems. Absolutely. And it's not just potatoes. So we are, <laughs> we are going to show you around and let you see some of the beauty that there is in the state of Idaho. Come along. We're going to start up in the northern part of Idaho at Coeur d'Alene. And I had never been to Idaho. I, I hadn't either. Yeah. And I had several people say if we went anywhere in Idaho, we had to go to Coeur d'Alene. And it was beautiful. It's a beautiful yes. little town. Absolutely. Now, this is the Coeur d'Alene Resort. And this resort is kind of like the hub of everything that goes on in town. They've got this great little uh, marina. Marina. Yeah. And you can walk out on it. You can go up in that, take some great pictures, and the boats go underneath you. That's their entry into the marina. Yeah, I was never on in a pier that was like that. Mm -hmm. There's one going in right now. Yeah. Beautiful beach. There's there's so many different sides to Idaho. The the, oh, yeah. the water, the rivers, the mountains. Now we're in the historic downtown of Coeur d'Alene. Sasquatch has to make an appearance in yeah. every town in the Pacific <laughs> Northwest. The big ice cream cone, I think, got somebody's attention there. This is a little shopping area in the downtown that's actually, I think, part of the resort. Yeah, I think it is. Had some cool little shops in there. Mm -hmm. This one was all centered around dogs. We had to go in. Yeah. And you'll see the moose with the little bird on its antler <laughs> a couple of times throughout the, the town. I think there's a map of five different places you can spot them. But you name it, beautiful vintage buildings, uh, murals, they do so much to make you feel like you're right in the middle of a, a small town. Now, we did something a little different for lunch. We went to Pita Pit, which is a chain, and we don't tend to do the chains a lot. But this was actually a national training location for the company. So we thought it would be kind of fun to see if they were on their toes, and they were. Oh, yeah, it was good. You had a gyro. I had a Greek steak pita, and we had an order of falafels. Everything was spot on. Nice little spot right there by the park beside them and just enjoyed a good lunch. And you can see, just looking down the street, the murals continue. Now, this is McEwen Park, and there's a lot of different things in McEwen Park. Yeah. Um, Part of it is raised up with parking underneath it, which you saw there. This is a uh, memorial that is for law enforcement, for military. It was really, really done nicely. Yes, it was. And that is for their Tomb of the Unknown. You'll see a lot of native art, uh, native to this area, that really is beautiful throughout the town. This also butts up to the marina, where we showed you the other side of the marina.
And look at those trees. Yeah, it, it's it's like a picture postcard. Yeah. And you've got the the trees in the dry area. Right beside it is the the lush greens. Mm -hmm. And just like that, the old buildings give way to the the newer high rises and apartments. It's it's such a uh, such a wild combination of the new and the old and so well preserved yeah. and so well blended. Mm -hmm. We passed the lucky lucky monkey. This was the old city hall building. I thought it was so cool looking. There again, some more of their artwork. And these pieces did happen to be for sale. <laughs> we didn't have room in the motorhome for them. So oh, shucks. That's a nice big bunny, though. Yes. With a saddle on it. There's me. <laughs> now, next up, this is the site we saw when we were a quarter mile away from Bruno Canyon. And this is going to require about six miles of gravel drive to get back to it, but well worth it. It wasn't bad drive, though. No, it, just it, it was gravel, yeah. but it wasn't anything ridiculous. This was so unexpected. This is from the parking lot. But as you start to go towards the edge of the overlook, this is what you see. It's a long ways down there. Now. If a hike is not on your agenda, this is perfect because you end up in park right at that overlook. Yeah. There are some paths where you can take some trails. We took the trail on further over to the right and you get some, some different views of the river going downstream that way. But this is just absolutely magnificent. And as Kathy said, the pictures don't do it justice yeah. as beautiful as what they are it is it's awe-inspiring it's also very dizzy yeah you know you get over there and you're going wow don't look too down too quickly yeah that's right but it was astounding it really was that was one of the the most beautiful canyons i think we've ever come across Now, this is part of a state park. And the other part, the entrance is like 20 miles away, but we went on over to it. Uh, Bruno Dunes State Park. And- How different yeah, can this be? You can start to see the sand dunes there in the middle of the frame. Huge big sand dunes. They were formed 11,000 years ago when the great Bonneville flood happened. That's where the Bonneville Salt Flats happened, down in Utah. The flood went all the way up into Idaho. And that's when that sand was deposited. And it's one of the rare places on Earth that the winds tend to, to blow from 180 degrees opposite directions. And it actually creates a crater in the middle of those dunes. And that's what keeps the dunes in one place as opposed to a lot of these dunes that you hear gradually creep. These stay in one spot. It was so amazing. Also here in the state park is a new $2.7 million observatory. Really, really a nice facility. You can come here and picnic. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think you can fish. Yeah, that is a... Uh, uh, human sundial. Hmm. Now we're in Boise and Boise, Idaho is the capital of Idaho and this doesn't seem like a normal state capital. It seems almost like a big small town. Yeah. It's got a whole different feel to it. It's very relaxed, very laid back. There's a lot of new architecture 
right beside the old architecture. This was really neat. This is the old Boise Depot. And the depot, you can see the train tracks running there behind it, has meeting spaces in it. You can have receptions there. Um, but it's still a depot. And at the end of it, they have this uh, steam engine along with the coal tender. And it is really, really a sight to see. That uh, locomotive and coal tender fully loaded 497,000 pounds. That's heavier than the motorhome. Just about. <laughs> In front of the depot is Platt Gardens. And it's beautiful. It is. It's all on a hill that looks overlooks the downtown. Boise's kind of down in a valley because we ended up being up high on yeah. both sides mm -hmm. of the town. Yeah, we did. But this little plat garden has got water features. It's got koi in the ponds. It's very serene. Mm -hmm. And that clock tower is beautiful. Now, one more park that you'll need to see is the Julia Davis Park. This has the Boise Art Museum in it. It has the Idaho History Museum. It's got a section of old historic buildings that Pioneer have been- homes and mm -hmm, stuff, yeah. That have been put in there. It even has the Black History Museum. Now, the Abraham uh, Lincoln statue was actually created by the same person who designed Mount Rushmore. Mm -hmm. This is the uh, Zoo Boise, Boise Zoo. And they have a rose garden there. Oh. That rose garden is absolutely amazing. I want you to keep in mind as you're watching this, we shot this a week after Labor Day. So, by all purposes nothing should be blooming anymore you would think but it smelled so uh, good walking through it it was really really beautiful they were preparing for a big art weekend big art in the park weekend yeah. every color of roses and some i've never seen before yep. Now this is the Basque Museum and Cultural Center. This area was settled by the Basque and a lot of the restaurants in the area, uh, a lot of the history of this, of this area is all laid out right in this, this basically two block yeah. area. That's an old historic home there. They do tell you what the buildings are. There's a walking tour posted up there. That I believe was a uh, boarding house. And this is a very famous mural of the, the Basque. Uh, Celebrations. Mm -hmm. Now downtown you'll find Main Marketplace. And this is just a collection of shops and eateries downtown it's all on areas where the streets are, are blocked. You can walk at your leisure and it's a beautiful area. It sure was. And at the end of the complex is where the arena is. And there again, the modern buildings yeah. right beside. very laid back town. Yeah, it really is. Love this theater. Oh, I love it. The them. Egyptian. Yeah, that architecture was amazing. Everything in Boise was pretty much amazing. Yeah. Including lunch. Oh yeah. This is an awesome little Mexican place that we found. 
beautiful inside. Uh, from our understanding, oh. the owner is an artist. You could tell. And a lot of the, the uh, art and things on display inside were, were hers. It's one of the prettiest ones I've ever been in. And caught us at a time we were hungry, but we weren't hungry. So we ended up and got a couple of beverages. You had a peach lemonade. Um, we had a an order of guacamole. That's how artistic the guacamole is yeah. served. <laughs> and we had two uh, chili rellenos, one in the green sauce, one in the red sauce. Amazing food. Now also in Boise is the old Idaho Penitentiary. And there's a lot of history to this building. Oh, yeah. It is open, you can take tours. We had Maggie with us so we couldn't while we were there. That gives you the warden's house and the chaplain's house. And then this one was where the guards were. And that's where they, I assume they were taken in and taken mm -hmm. out. Yeah. This part of it, there were 28 cubicles down through there, and that was for visitation. That wing was actually put on by the prisoners. Uh, it said it saved $800,000 in labor. And it gives you some history of, of some of the people who have been there. Now this is Table Rock. You'll see it there on the left of the screen and its view over the city. And it is just, absolutely stunning and the weather pretty much looked like that the whole time oh yeah there. now out there on top of that hill looks like a giant lizard and that is lizard butte It has to be volcanic oh, because yeah. it's black rock. When you come to the side road, the entrance is right there. You park out along the road and you can walk in. They do open this up once a year and it's for Easter morning service. And Going up there and seeing that view for a sunrise service, that would be incredible. Oh, yeah. That's where they hold the services, right there. And this is how we ended up making it to the top there. Yeah, Maggie really didn't want to do all that walking. <laughs> but this is the view you have from up on top of Lizard Butte. It's pretty spectacular. It really is. And look at how green they're farming down there. Now I was out at the part along the road and the next thing I know, I'm not sure where Kathy is. <laughs> so as I'm filming this, I turn around and look and she's going around where the cross is on top all the way around to the other side. So Kathy, what did you think about our time in the beautiful state of Idaho? I am blown away. It is so amazing. It, we've shown you a couple of, of the cities in Idaho between Coeur d'Alene and Boise that are fantastic. The nature is outstanding also. And we want to leave you with our video today with our exit of Idaho, Route 95 South through the Oahe country. So enjoy the Oahe country and we will see you very soon in our next video. Thanks.
Thanks for watching today. If you haven't already, please subscribe to our channel. And be sure to ring the notification bell so you'll know when new videos come out. Don't forget to follow us on social media too.